Ah. Crook <laughs> Crooked Crows. What time is it? <coughs> <coughs> Oh no. Oh. 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 Ah. <coughs> Let's go. Let's go. This is the skip. <laughs> All of his co workers were gone. <laughs> what could it mean? <laughs> Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Maybe <laughs> Stanley would never pick up the bucket. A lonely bucket. Lone. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. left. This was right. not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hope coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into oh, his manager's office, control. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered uh, in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't get incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad. Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh, collectible. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. No, 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 no. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Keep Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. 
Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Part 2, 7. That's you. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Yes. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring <coughs> job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? <laughs> No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place oh, nice. and to everything it stood for. On. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. 
what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. <laughs> My goodness, only Damn. 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. Ah. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One soul? <laughs> Do you have any no, idea no, what your like... purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment, but here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless, to see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Goodbye. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. Oh, no. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. I died. I think. <laughs> all of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley, oh. pick up the bucket. What? Stanley picked up the bucket. Why? Can I go now? Huh. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, <laughs> telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. <laughs> yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Yeah. And so the two of them detoured through the, the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. He 
mission status. Nearby fireplace somewhere. Ah, oh, bunny. Oh, I see. Uh, the the statue, right? The statue. Stairs. Something to do with stairs. Somewhere with somewhere both red and blue. Ah. Oh, and the the boss room. Okay. I know. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these <laughs> things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. No. Another Stanlerine no. under your belt. What's that bad name? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed, by, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. to go I need to jump down the elevator raced downward plummeting towards an unknown fate it would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together if not for the bucket soothing him <laughs> comforting him reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty he would be all right the bucket is here for you Stanley sure. everything will be fine sure, baby. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Yes. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock mm, no. everyone in the office was being videotaped monitored like guinea pigs the bucket had never seen anything like this and it the very bucket. nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently reassuring it that everything would be fine was the bucket under the mind control facilities influence as well had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do, what kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These <coughs> questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. Okay. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that oh. this machinery would never again exist. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Oh, is it? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. 
Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on oh, Earth. Freedom! Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway freedom through ending. and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... Ah! What? Well, wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, <laughs> lingering in uncertainty. Can I jump? Can I jump? Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, to go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. No, not not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. No. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. The bucket is gone. <laughs> ah. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Like Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. No, I don't Perhaps want the he had simply missed a memo. I don't want the bucket anymore. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he if wanted to stop by the, bucket, the employee lounge escape? first, just to freedom? admire it. The lounge right. was sublime, okay. a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Stairs, large room, a lot of boxes. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just <laughs> let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he Speed relaxed run. for a few moments with some calming new age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. I want freedom. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? 
Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls. Oh, yes. Give me freedom. 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 Freedom Blackness ending. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments uh, yes, away. Freedom. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all Freedom. he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Finally. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Start early. Dang. Freedom! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Read Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a map. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Stairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness mm. that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. 
Yeah. Ooh. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. Yes. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would uh, come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious, he exclaimed. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley! Stanley, it's me! <laughs> the bucket! Oh no. Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley! Find me! He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, it froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley mm -hmm. doubled over in agony and blacked out. <laughs> ah. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, eh? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. Mm -mm -mm. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game it could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place how cruel the world can be mariella thought and she hugged her own bucket even tighter but of course she had no time for this there were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket Can would provide know? absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. Ah. Ah, Antonia. Tidur kejap Kita nak pergi ni cari figurine Red and blue What? Bucket Generator. No more narrator. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, but eager to get back to business. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Yep. 
Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Yeah, I don't want to run boxes. I would say this is a room with a lot of boxes. Ah, that's one. There's a figurine. I, oh, oh. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Mm -hmm. Very soon, you'll collect the last Figler one, Agarine. and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. No, no prize. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now, we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. <laughs> but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform no, and fell to his death. No. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Okay. How wonderful. Stanley was alone. Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was grand, majestic, perhaps too much. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. What is this place? Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. Shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. Shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. Shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the. You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording? It was all just in Stanley's head. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. <sighs> Now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is mm. all your fault. That's, that's the end? Damn you. Even now, Why? Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. No. And here it was, the lounge. Blue, red, blue and red. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I do. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's blue. incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? 
I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Ah. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Ah. Give me a chance. And there it is, the last Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This yes. is a real accomplishment. Yeah, this is you. doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward. <laughs> we can have, we that. have that. So, instead I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. No? No reward? Damn. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Yes. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. Uh, the two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, yes. let me show you. <laughs> what do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Here. Yes. Can you oh, it it's beautiful. Oh, isn't it? No, wait. Where are you going? Oh, can die. Oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley. Th no! Oh, thank God you lived. No, no, no. What are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Because you... Stanley, let's go back to the other room. My God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You are literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> we'll die. Not yet. Maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. This one? Uh, this... This ending? Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. Da. I thought... Okay. Dah. I think I'll do. I think I'll meet you. Stanley, ah. I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's just... It's those figurines. Those figlers. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the Aye. memory zone? I would love nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. This is new content. Here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Mm -hmm. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. 
We'll never be like that again, Stanley. Tuju. Dek. And here was the second Stanlerine. You found this one all on your own just by poking around behind the boss's office. You did that, Stanley. I'll be honest. Back then, I had no faith in you to find any <laughs> of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? To be the bathroom. Hey, that's exactly right. It was here in the boss's bathroom. It was the third one. You picked it up, and then after that, you had three of them. Yeah. I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. <laughs> what the heck? What kind of science is that? Let's see. What came next? Ooh. I don't remember. Oh yes, we found a figly in this pink room. Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. What pink room? Interesting. This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was in the warehouse. I remember it so clearly. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Huh? Enjoy. Ha 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 Takes you back, doesn't it? I spent a lot of time making that video, but it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. Can I go back? Or should I go to that place? Yeah. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Mm. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other. Except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. And then there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, memory zone. Hmm. Um, no, 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 I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. <laughs> okay. Okay, yes, the room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going, I want more. 
And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? Ah! Okay, I remember, remember. Yes, I love that video. Okay. Pink room. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have neutered the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. This was our second figly. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. This is it. The very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? <laughs> what came there. before this? Look, it's the terrible new content that we were uh, originally yes, sold on. Well. I remember hating it back then. But time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I did... Oh, yes! The two doors! Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. That is my room. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way, I stopped making decisions. I became lazy and I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions. He would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But ah, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Last one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we can try. Last one. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Maybe it's time to. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door it's on his time left. time to go to the left. Finally. It's time.
Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah blah blah. Dark secrets. The key uh, they have it. pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. Okay, last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. <sighs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Get a freedom now. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place oh, where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world but here was the proof the heart of the operation controls labeled with emotions happy or sad or content walking eating working all of it monitored and commanded from this very place and as the cold reality of his past began to sink in Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Freedom again. Six time. blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty was it over yes he had won he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments away and yet even as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this yeah. mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. 
It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Pipa pa 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 pia. Mana bi tau pipa pa 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 pia. Mana? Ni. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Delete <laughs> Bye bye. I think that's the end. Johnny. Ah. What? Oh, dia kata dia ada nak buat epilog kan untuk sequel untuk <laughs> Can I move? Oh. Where am I? Oh.
able to <laughs> the bucket oh yeah gym that's so what what? Okay. <laughs> Figurines. <laughs> Twenty six. again <laughs> that it burn <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Big <laughs> Big Gun <laughs> yes, good. Let's do it. In the current time, it's <laughs> ten, ten rubber, ten twenty-five. Eh. Oh no! Can I stop it? Twenty-six now. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, Janet. What's fun? <laughs> <laughs>